Welcome to day six of our five day track build challenge presented by Koenig Wheels and Toyo Tires. Obviously we're more ambitious than we are talented, but today's the day. We're gonna fire that candle up and bolt these sexy bitches on. Sadly, our time with Hasport Performance and VTech Academy is coming to an end. They've got to get back to America. They've got to go back there and make America great again. One case swap at a time, one VTech Academy video at a time. Thank you so much, Brian. My Appreciate pleasure. your time. Sorry to desert you. You're a man, a myth, and a legend. If you were a woman, I'd kiss you on the mouth. Thank you have helped us immensely. You're okay, too. Thank you very Thank much. You. I appreciate the hospitality. We'll be down in Arizona real soon. Cool. I know Dave's looking to snowbird, so yep. I'll be down there. It's a good excuse for us to go see Living in his you. garage shortly. He's building a serious man cave, so I'm going to move in there soon. Garage Mahal. Yep. He's doing it big. Thanks again, guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that Brian's gone, we should have had him talk to you about the K-Tuner. He finished the wiring, but he knows more about this than we do. But it's relatively new to the market, and it's a very affordable way of having a reprogr reprogrammable ECU in your K-Swap Tonda. So, 450 bucks, it uses a 05, or at least in our case, we're using an 05 to 06 PRB unit, which is cheap. There isn't a lot of demand for these because uh, for some of the other tuning options, you can't use this box. Yeah, I bought that one for 50 bucks. 50 bucks, tough to beat that. So we sent it down to Gate Tuner. They worked their magic with stuffs in here, and that makes it a fully programmable unit. So we can adjust ignition timing, fuel timing, all that good stuff. Uh, obviously, we can change VTEC engagement. It's got a lot of friendly features in here too for turbo guys. So there's extra tables for boost. There's anti-lag. There's adjustable two-step. It's really a full-featured solution for 450 bucks, which is pretty impressive. It does data logging, real-time tuning, all that good stuff. So it's ready to be plugged in. Uh, and I think at that point, we just need to button up some stuff, put some oil in it, Top and, up the uh, get an exhaust system done. Oh, exhaust system. That's kind of a big one, but Pete will knock that out in no time. Last plug. Oh, yeah. All right, we're in. Time to install the K-Tuned Universal Fit Slim Design Radiator Fan. Yeah, this thing's money. It is a nice slim design. Fits in there great. It's 12 inches wide. Moves 750 CFM. And uh, comes with the install kit. We're using the the zip tie style install kit, but there's there's another style kit that comes with it, so you can mount it in a variety this of ways. Guy's, uh, right here. Yeah, yeah. So you can. I'm not really sure how kind that of, works, but you, you push it through the rad just like I'm doing with the zip tie, and then you use the other end with a spring to lock it in. Oh, the but spring locks it in. Yeah, okay. sources have told us that these tend to fail. Okay. And zip ties don't. Yeah. So we're going with the zip tie method. Right on. And what we're gonna do, I mean, wiring's super simple. There's already a plug on this side here yeah. for the stock fan. Mm -hmm. So all we're gonna do is just extend some wires all the way around, and I'll show you in a sec, we'll wire this up. While Pete wires up the rad fan, I'm just doing a nut and bolt check on all the suspension, and uh, notice we had some loose camber adjusters on our front upper control arms from Hard Race. But you can see the upper ball joint is in these slots here and I can loosen the fasteners from the top side and slide the the uh, knuckle in and out and that will add negative camber if I go in or take out negative camber if I come out so I've just split the difference here put it in the middle tighten those bolts down and uh, that'll give us a starting point we're gonna go to the alignment rack probably in the auto to get alignment done once this car is on the ground and rolling under its own power but in the meantime everything's tight so Pete won't crash on the way to the alignment rack. Wiring is complete. It was a simple job. I just wired the blue wire to the black wire on the K-Tune fan to our factory plug off the D-Sizzle OEM fan. And that means I can now plug it in just like that. But before I do that, I'm trying to route this. I don't know if you can see up here, but just along the underside of an, uh, an already loomed wire here just so it'll be a little bit cleaner. Time to install an air intake on our K20, and obviously K-Tuned has got you covered on that too. 
we're using their universal K-swap intake. Fits on EKs, EJ, EGs, DC2s. It comes in two pieces, which allows you to you know, orient it the way you want. It comes with provisions for the factory IAT. It's got your uh, standard uh, breather from the uh, valve cover. These filters are a new option from, from K-Tune, by the way. It has an integrated velocity stack built into it, but they also have the other style with like a separate velocity stack and a filter that, that sort of clamps onto it. Now that I've explained how this intake works, I'm gonna have my manservant, Peter, install it. Yes, master, yes. Get to work. I will do this. Well, the first thing you wanna do is make sure your K-Tune throttle body logo is lined up with your coupler logo. Oh, absolutely. You gotta tune your logos. Now, and the next tuning that has to happen is, well, you don't want to forget. Yeah, true. In there, done that. Your worm clamps. Yeah. Ooh, I don't want to. See, I want to tuck these away so they look nice. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do that. He's all about tuning his clamps. Yeah, I'm all about the hose clamp tuning. Now, oh, did, I don't know if he mentioned these, but K-Tune has hoses that you, uh, you can pre-cut, or that are pre-cut, but yeah. we had to kind of cut one here to make it work because our CSF rad was a little Mounted different. lower than usual? Yeah, yeah, than, yeah. than other ones. Yep. But now we're, for intake tuning, we'll line that up. We got plenty of space here. Doesn't touch our overflow for the radiator. Our clutch line here is clear. Well, we're gonna drill a hole here to cut this piece of plastic out to pass the filter through. And me and Dave thought, you know what? We just normally cut this out with a utility knife, but since they've got this three inch hole saw. We're gonna try it, see what happens. I may fail mi miserably here. I think I'm already a little off, but let's just go for it. And our battery I think is dead. Oh no. Take two, now with a somewhat full battery, right? All right. <laughs> Good thing I tightened that, yeah. huh? Yeah, nice work, buddy. Oh. Oh man, it's a tight to fit. It's like so tight. Oh man, that's custom it's like fit. Perfect. Check out Pete's uh, intake power stance here, everybody. It's full power stance. While he does that intake tuning, I'm going to do an important job over here. That's right. Progress. Check another item off the list. Intake, intake is complete. I just need to plug in the AIT sensor here. Oh, yeah. Bam, look at that. Check it out over here. Fit like a glove. Look at the yeah. fitment on that DP. Mint. This is our K tuned four into one race header. They also make a four into two into one, which is more for mid range. This is more like their top end power maker. Uh, as you can see, it's got a flex joint down here, take any stress out of the flexing of the engine versus the exhaust position. Um, slip fit, spring loaded here. And we're going into a Magnaflow two and a quarter stainless exhaust. This is full stainless as well, by the way. Uh, we know that the three inch exhaust makes more power, but we don't want this car to be ear bleedingly loud. We want it to be relatively civilized on the street. So that's why we've gone with this two and a quarter inch system from, from Magnaflow. You can see it's got a resonator in it. It's got a straight through-ish muffler in the back. Is that fair to call it that, Yeah, Peter? I think that's, it's got a canister. It's a, uh, it's a bazooka. It also comes with a test pipe, which we're going to replace with this Jezzy high flow catalytic converter from Vibrant Performance. We used this on the S2000. And now that we're hating Mother Earth on that car, we figured we'd better love Mother Earth on this car. So Pete's going to show us his fabrication skills, make all this fit together, bolt up to the yeah, old Yeah, because that Magnaflow exhaust is made to fit the single overhead cam engine. Right. So there's going to, I think a little bit of cutting needed here. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gap, I think, between where this will hang and where the header will hang. So we need to fill that up. Yeah, but we'll get that sorted real quick. Splice the cat in there, we'll be ready to party. While the header's off, we figured it's a good time to swap out the oil filter for this new can end filter. We use these on all our cars. They, if you look online, you'll find that their filtration is really, really good. 
better than the OE filters, much better than most of the aftermarket filters, so. And the uh, bigger question is, are you gonna be able to remove the old well, filter can, without getting oil all over yourself, Dave? I can remove it, but the not getting oil all over my part, all over myself part, mm, I don't know. It's gonna get all over the axle. Oh. We're gonna lose a lot of oil here, because unfortunately I already put some. Oh. Actually, it's not, we're not losing a lot of oil. Anyway, that wasn't so bad. We didn't lose hardly any oil at all, which means we haven't put enough in the motor yet. <laughs> and these things need to be topped up high, especially for track use. Yeah, that's true. Well, my hands are all oily. I can't take it down oh. very well, but I'll, I'll fix that momentarily. There you go, Internet. DP got dirty. Peter drew the short straw on the who gets to install the header job and uh, it really you, isn't that bad. As you can tell, he's in a very comfortable position here. I just gotta... Full power stance again. Get the gasket on at the same time. But I'm there. Yes. Get it all. Now. I've sprayed... You've lubricated the hangers the for The hangers me. for you, so they should... Pre-lube for my pleasure. Slide in. Yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, oh yeah. You hear that? Oh, that was good and juicy. Baby, come on. Is this hanger for like... Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Woo. Look at your hands, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, this Civic continues to impress. Yeah. She's... But our exhaust system looks nice. It does. Look at that. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah, it's a nice clean look. So I've gone ahead and cut both flanges off our Jesse Cat. Now I grabbed a three bolt K tune flange that obviously mates up to the header. And Rui's gonna weld this for me because I'm just not so good at it. And here is our front section of the exhaust system. We got the Jesse Cat on. We flared the Magnifo exhaust just to fit the catalytic converter, and now it's all gonna get welded up, and then we can fit it to the car. Oh, look at that tight fit there, PT. You nailed it. And by you, I mean Rui. I know, look at that. That is on the money. <sighs> Pro spec is, fitment. Look at that. Damn. This is the last hard part we're bolting up, I think, buddy. Well, for now, yeah. Maybe. Once this is bolted up, I think we can top up the oil, bleed the brakes, bleed the clutch. Fire it up. Turn the ignition key. Oh, it's so close. It's a shame everybody else had to go home. I know. It doesn't feel the same today. I know. The celebration. We're working at a snail's pace, just me and you. <laughs> I know. Well, the details, right? Yeah. But not much. Well, we had to add a, one more hanger. Just because the other hangers were a little bit higher, as you can see, than the actual one to the chassis. So this is added, and now that it is, voila, we've got our exhaust system ready to go. So I think we just need to hook up the battery terminals and start this sucker up. Well, we gotta top up the oil, bleed the brakes, bleed the clutch. Oh. But then we'll fire it up. Okay. So we're putting in some Valvoline synthetic power 5w30 and i think the normal recommendation is 5w20 right no this this motor is 5w30 oh okay yeah i was gonna say we're just thickening up a little bit for track no, use but we're no not. i guess we're, we're not. not but i have run 40 weight in my k motors in the past with good success for racing purposes but this will be more than good enough for yeah tape. and we should always mention you want to Always, always, always top your oil up about half a liter, half a quart above full if you're gonna be on the track because these oil pans are not baffled and you can get some sloshing and long high G corners. Well, you get some rod knock that happens and it's happened many times. Talk to the man behind the camera, it's happened to him once. Yeah, I've done it all and uh, yeah, overfilling the oil does help on these motors but Long term, we got to baffle this oil pan. But yeah, we'll, we'll do that eventually. For now, we just want to get it. Now that's good. Let's that's, get it running. That's the poor man's fix. Power. That's good. 
You ready? I'm ready when you are. You turn in the key. <sighs> See if she Got spits in your time. rods at the front here. Oh, oh my goodness! Like a kitten! Purring like a kitten. Wow. Wow. It's so quiet. Wow, it just it just fired up like that, man. Well, I guess it's a Honda motor. They always do that, it's right? Supposed to, yeah. Ooh, it sounds so good. It does sound good. Mm -hmm. That's a victory, buddy. Did it. Yeah. And yeah. all everybody else here. We gotta yes. thank everybody. Yes, we do. Brian, Ken, Aaron, and the guys at K-Tuned. Oh my god. They spent so much time and effort helping us while doing their day jobs. Cavill came in, did a great job. Thank you, everybody. And look at this, this is the end result. Okay, give it a little blip. Give it some deep <laughs> Oh, nice. yeah. so good. Woo. Well, Jake, I ruined my favorite hat for you, buddy, but we've reached a major milestone in the build. It's time to put the wheels and tires on, which means we're very close to driving it out of here. Let's just explain to you a little bit about our wheel and tire setup and why we ended up going in this direction. The wheel is obviously a Koenig. It's their Hypergram model. Comes in 15 and 17 inch sizes. We've gone with a 15 by seven and a half. They also have it in a 15 by eight and a half, which we could have probably squeezed on here if we rolled the fenders, but we wanted a nice bolt on setup. Something to get Jake rolling on. We're not going for like maximum time attack setup here. This is a nice street slash track setup for us. Back in my day, seven and a half was super wide too, so relax internetters, this is plenty wide. Things that we really like about the Koenig Hypergram, well include the bronze finish, because bronze always looks I good know. on every it's car. It's gonna look amazing on this it car. It is gonna look good on a black car. But what we really like is the fact that it's, it's built using a flow forming technology. Basically what that it means is, it's a cast wheel to start with, but they can cast it narrower than you would with a normal cast wheel and then they actually, they actually widen it. They, there's a, a, a process where the wheel is spun and a flow forming device is put in here and it actually stretches the rim out wider. So this might have started say at like a, a 15 by five and they stretch it out to a 15 by seven and a half. And what that means is you start with less material than a cast wheel and that ends up with a wheel that's about 25% lighter than your average cast wheel. This thing only weighs 11.6 pounds, which is very light for a 15 by seven and a half. The other advantages of flow forming include the fact that during that process, there's actually some molecular restructuring of the aluminum that happens. It's actually quite similar to, to forging. It makes the wheel stronger. So typically a flow formed wheel is 20 to 30% stronger than a cast wheel. Other benefits also include what they call elongation, which basically means in a, in a harsh impact, let's say you hit a pothole, the wheel is able to bend a bit or the, the, the molecules are able to elongate and then they'll spring back to the original position without cracking the rim. A cast wheel might crack in a pothole where this will actually bend and rebound into its, its, or it may hold the bend, but at least it didn't crack and fail completely and you haven't destroyed the wheel or ended up in a crash situation. So it's a more bendable wheel, which is good for safety. Also good at the racetrack when you're pounding curbs and stuff. You don't want to crack a wheel and end up like uh, some of those guys on there, we won't name the brands, but those cast wheels that tend to fall apart at the track, these won't do that. So it is a legit safety feature to have that kind of elongation in the, in the, in the process that these are built with. Toyo R888Rs, you guys saw us test these briefly on our Mustang last fall, but in suboptimal conditions. It was cold out and we didn't really get to test them out, but some differences that you'll recognize from the R888, which this is basically an evolution of, is a much wider tread block on the outer shoulder. That's designed to give you better tri dry grip, better stability in these outer tread blocks. So it should give you a sharper turn in too. Uh, they've also made some changes to the inner construction of the wheel, which helps it heat up faster. So it should be better for time attack that way and maybe get it you know, lit up quicker. But apparently it also makes it more consistent across longer sessions, so it won't overheat if you're doing a half hour session or even an hour long race. So a better endurance tire, a better time attack tire, more dry grip, all of which we will confirm in our own testing, both on this car and on the Mustang. So excited to have these in use. That's a lot of words, Peter. I think it's time to bolt these suckers up. I'd say so. Let's do it. It's the moment we've been waiting for, Peter. Let's We're almost do this. out of here. Not that we want to leave K-Tune because it's been amazing to build the car here, but I think we've used up their shop space <laughs> long enough. 
I feel a little, say that. a little guilty about the extra day, but we've got some nice uh, tuner nuts here from our friends at Mackin Industry. These are Wheelmate SR45Rs. Nice uh, rotating yeah, they're super baller. faces or whatever that's called on there, which prevents you from scratching the seat on your fancy wheels. These, by the way, are incredibly affordable. For a wheel that weighs 11.6 pounds, I found these online for 125 bucks a wheel, which, I mean, that's cheaper than a lot of the crappy cast stuff that you can buy, so to be able to buy a flow-formed wheel for 125 bucks kind of blows my mind. I, um, they definitely fill a spot in the marketplace that is, offers great value and most of the benefits of a forged wheel, so pretty hard to resist that from like a racer standpoint where you know wheels are kind of a consumable, they're going to get beat up. It's nice to go with a wheel that doesn't cost a fortune to replace, so. We have touchdown. Oh man, she is on Whoa, the ground. Oh, it's tucked in the front, PT. We we're a little tucked in the front. Too far. Yeah. We got uh, no, oh, we're like on the lip in the front here. That's, yeah, that's not, not ideal. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> I go mean, up. it clears, but yeah, not, not we gotta very go much. Up there for sure. All right. The back, the back's not as bad. The, nope. But we it's got, still. We got the rake set up here pretty badly, so. Yeah, it's low in the front. Damn, that looks good. It looks good, doesn't it? All right, let's see if we got the ride height dialed. We fixed the alignment as best we could with our ghetto skills and we'll go to the rack after that oh that's looking much better well that is a wrap for this episode big thanks to the guys at k-tuned for all the help next stop for us is the dyno where we're gonna see how how much power this car makes show us right now pt uh by the way we went with the 205 5015 and the toyo r 888rs Yes, you can get it in a 225.50 or 225.45, uh, but again, we wanted to set the car up to be fun to drive, to be easy to drive. We're not going for maximum grip. We just wanted something that's gonna fit the car well, 